So you wanna practice your bass quietly so that you don't disturb your neighbors, your roommates, your girlfriend, or your dog or whatever, this is the right video for you. In this video, I'm gonna go over four methods to practice bass quietly, but first, we gotta talk about headphones. So all the methods I'm gonna talk about today require headphones because no matter how quiet you get your bass amp, it carries through walls. It's just the nature of bass frequencies. Like if you ever been to a club or that's playing loud music, you can always hear stuff outside, but it's always like the low rumbly bits and like the kick drum. That's because bass frequencies just travel right through walls and the treble frequencies get stopped. So I guess you could probably just turn like the bass EQ knob on your amp down and that might help a little bit but you're still going to get some bleed and you can just count out DIY soundproofing. It just does not work. Well, you're not gonna spend enough to make it work, so it's not worth doing. Anyway, you want to hear your bass authentically and a good pair of headphones can deliver that for you. Personally, I'm using a pair of these. These are the Audio-Technica M50s. They're like a studio quality set of headphones. They'll run you about 150 bucks. Really, really great headphones. I've had these for a few years and I use them for basically everything, not just bass, but you'll often see these in videos. Um, musicians will wear these for tracking sessions or even studio engineers for monitoring and mixing. Really, really good pair of headphones. You can get um, Audio-Technica's M40s, which are really, really similar for about 50 bucks less but you won't wanna go much cheaper than that. The fidelity that you're going to get out of the methods I'll talk about later depend very heavily on having a good quality pair of headphones. So don't cheap out. Like, this will work, you will not be happy with this. Whatever headphones you end up with, do not get something like Beats headphones that are bass focused. They'll just be so boomy, you will not enjoy it. You want an even frequency response across the board and that will make for a good pair of headphones. So let's just get the obvious one out of the way. It's just gonna be your existing bass amp. Most of them have a headphone out as well as an auxiliary input in so that you can put your music into it and practice quietly because when you put the headphones in, it will mute the speaker. I've done this really extensively with my Rumble 500 so even though it is a pretty big and powerful amp, you can use it as a practice solution very easily. And the entire rumble line is really good for this. I also recently did a full review of this little head unit. This is just a bass amp with no speaker in it, but it does offer you Bluetooth, which is really nice because then you don't have to have a cable to connect your music in. You will still need wired headphones. Uh, you can check that out up here. Is it up here? This one? I never remember. Anyway, this is also fairly portable because of its small size, but we can go even more portable. The Vox Amplug is probably the best budget option. You can get these for about 50 bucks and they are tiny. This little dongle thing just sticks right into your bass and kind of hangs there. It runs on a couple of AAA batteries. You plug your headphones in and your music and then you're good to go. Now, the sound quality on the Vox is okay at best, but it is by far the cheapest and most portable option I'm gonna talk about today. If you're also looking for some additional features, the bass specific one, which is the one that you should get for bass because, you know, bass. But it also features some built-in drums, so if you're tired of playing to a metronome, that's an option. But if you want some more features, then you're gonna want to look at the Zoom B14. The Zoom B14 is what I consider to be the best all-around practice unit you can buy. It's portable, it's affordable, and it has an impressive number of features. Now, I've used this thing on the road a number of times. I've just plugged a USB battery in while I've been in my hotel room, plugged my bass in and a pair of headphones, and I can get the practice in that I need. I have also used this pedal in a couple of live situations and it's worked out really great there too. Now, if you're a beginner, I would almost recommend getting this over one of those beginner bass amps, like a Rumble 15 or whatever, uh, unless you really, really need to be you know, heard through the speaker, this is going to offer you a lot of bang for your buck, provided you have a decent pair of headphones. But even with a pair of like Apple earbuds, I still think this would be better than the Rumble 15. But what you get with this is an impressive list of effects and amp sins, a built-in tuner, a drummer, and a looper. This thing is awesome. It's kind of hard to believe that this thing is only about 120 bucks and you can get a version that doesn't have the expression pedal for even less. And frankly, I find this to be a little unnecessary, but there are some creative options there. The one thing that this unit does lack is a way to connect to your computer because even though it does have USB, the only thing that does is manage your effects through the uh, software that you can install. It doesn't actually pass audio. 
If you want to connect your base to your computer, what you'll need is an audio interface. Now an audio interface is simply a little box that will take your quarter inch input or even an XLR and then converts it into a USB signal that your computer can use. The Scarlett Solo is the one that I use. You've probably seen this on my channel a few times. It's a little pretty inexpensive but great sounding interface. It's probably the most popular one and for good reason. It's only about 120 bucks and you can even find them cheaper used. Now audio interfaces are actually a pretty safe bet to buy used because there's almost nothing Nothing on them to go wrong. I've been using this one for about 10 years. Absolutely no problems the entire time. But getting your base signal into your computer is only just the first half because once you have it there, you have the option for various software to manipulate your signal or record it or whatever you want to do. And you will probably want to use some sort of software unless you're using pedals or something because just the dry DI signal of a bass is pretty really blah most of the time. What I use most of the time for practice is just the standalone version of Amplitube. Amplitube is a free piece of software that gives you access to a bunch of different amp models, bass guitar, different cabs, different effects. They do also have some paid options on there, but I've been getting by with the free option just fine. You even have two tracks on there for recording, so you can use one track to record your bass and then put music on the second track. I've made a full tutorial on how I make YouTube covers and it's just using the free version of Amplitube. Check it out up here. Now beyond Amplitube, you do have other options for software like Logic or Reaper or Pro Tools or even GarageBand. And these are what are considered DAWs or digital audio workstations that will allow you to record entire sessions and layer things on top of each other and basically produce and make full songs. Additionally, a lot of them will have bass specific presets or you can implement VSTs or other plugins or even to still use Amplitude because again, Amplitude sounds pretty good and it's free and it's really powerful. You should, you should try out Amplitude. This is not sponsored by the way. I just, I just get a lot of value out of Amplitude and it's free. Did I mention that it's free? zero dollars to get Amplitude and play around with it. For just practice purposes, I feel like most DAWs are a little bit overkill for it, and the standalone version of Amplitude is good enough for my practice sessions. I find that it's really light on resources, and it works for Mac and PC, so unless you have like a Chromebook or something weird, then it's a pretty safe bet that you can run it on your computer. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I build presets for Amplitude for my How to Sound Like series. So if you wanna sound like Geezer Butler or Mike Durnt or Tim Comerford, I've got presets for those. You can check out my videos on that and then download those, those presets from my Patreon page. Speaking of which, let me just take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters. Everyone's gotta start somewhere. So those are my four techniques for practicing bass quietly. And really quick while I have you here, I want to tell you about a really, really cool project that I have happening this weekend. So for the past 10 years, I've been part of this rock opera called Deep Love, and we've been performing it around Halloween every year for the last 10 years. Well, except for last year because of COVID. But again, this year because of COVID, we wanted to perform the show, but since it doesn't really make sense to do it in a live theater setting like we would normally do it, we're actually doing a live stream that is happening on October 31st, so Halloween night. Simply put, it's a tragic yet beautiful love story told entirely through awesome rock music performed by some of the best musicians I've ever had the, the pleasure of sharing a stage with, including a couple of uh, alumni from The Voice. They're, they're pretty legit. Now, normally we do live shows across Utah and Idaho, but because of the pandemic, we weren't able to do it last year, but we weren't gonna let that stop us this year, and we are doing a live stream on October 31st, Halloween night. And don't worry if you already have plans that night. If you buy a ticket, you'll be able to watch it on demand through the week, so from October 31st to November 7th, you can watch it at your convenience. I'll go ahead and leave the ticket link down below, as well as my coupon code. It's Andrew20, it'll get you 20% off, and I promise that it will be the best money you ever spent on a ticket the whole year. I, I, I guarantee it. If this doesn't become a part of your Halloween tradition from now on, um, I'll be kind of surprised, because I'm, I'm not underselling the show. It's really good. Like, like really good. <laughs> anyway, I am AMP the bass player. I'm gonna leave you with one of my favorite songs from the show. And I'll see you this weekend. Take it easy.